She chose God as her best friend when growing up. Now, part of the Bride of Christ and commissioned by the Father, Minister Charmaine Noel carries the good news of the Gospel to all the lands. Minister Noel and the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, welcomes you on the Highway of Holiness. God told Minister Charmaine Noel to prophesy into the lives of the people so that they may be carriers of His glory and walk in the supernatural with mighty miracles, signs and wonders following. Hello everyone and welcome to the program Highway of Holiness where it is a pleasure to be in your company to speak the very heart and mind of God to you. Well, I have to, on today's program a very special guest, my dear husband, Minister Curtis. Curtis, welcome to the program. A pleasure to be here, uh, Prophet Charmaine. It's always a pleasure to be here with you on this program, okay? Glory to God. Well, you know, there was something, uh, precious people, that, that, that the Lord laid on uh, Curtis's heart because he was looking at the violence and the sexual immorality that plagues societies, not just in the nation of Trinidad and Tobago, but really uh, many nations. We have, we have quite a lot of uh, violence, gang violence, and uh, perversions and sexual immoralities. But there was something that when in his reading the scriptures that he discovered, uh, Curtis, what is it? Is it something that the church is missing? What are we missing as the church of Jesus Christ? Uh, are we not addressing the violence and the sexual immorality? What, what is the Lord speaking to you uh, concerning that? Well, it's not so much that they're missing, but we have to diagnose what the problem is, okay? And as you know, a doctor would diagnose uh, a disease by looking at a cluster of symptoms and he's saying, okay, once these symptoms occur, then it must be this particular pathology or this particular disease. Or he may send you for further tests or send you to a specialist. Um, so in our instance, or what we are looking at as believers, uh, and we look at what's happening upon the earth, we look at the symptoms. So we see their symptoms of sexual immorality and violence. That is the primary uh, 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 manifestations that we're seeing right now on the, on the, on the news. Um, so when we look at the manifestation of these specific evils upon the land, we know from scripture that these evils are linked to one particular practice, which is idolatry. Wow. And, and so you, you discovered in the Bible that, that there is a direct link uh, with uh, violence and sexual immorality to idolatry or people operating in idol worship. Uh, do you have uh, any scriptures? Uh, yeah, well, the first thing, let's, let's, we could first define what idolatry is. Yes. And we can go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. And if you can use your lovely uh, media voice and read that for me, please, Prophet sure. Charmin. Not a problem. So Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7 says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Very good. So right there, God has established a boundary. Yes. Okay? We must have no other God besides God. Simply put, in other words, there should be no activity, no person, yes. okay, nothing of the sort should be placed in, uh, in, in, the, in the position that God is supposed to occupy in our lives. That's very important. Yes. Yes. We, that boundary is set. Now, it's always important to know that the boundaries that God set are yes. first set in heaven and then applied to the earth. So these are eternal boundaries. There is nothing we can do to change them. That is very, very important. Man cannot rewrite these boundaries. Yes. These are eternal boundaries set by God. So if we are to have no other God besides the God of Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham, right? I know it's not in order, prophet, but I'm just saying that 
and, 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 and this, we are not to have any other God besides Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, yes, yes. those are eternal boundaries. Yes. If we are unable to keep these boundaries, whether we choose not to keep them yes. consciously or we are ignorant of the fact, the penalties still apply. Yeah. All right? The penalties will still apply. Uh, that's very important. Um, God is not, it's not to say that God is wicked, but uh, you know that God has established uh, uh, eternity in man's heart so that we are able to understand that there is a sovereign God. So therefore, in many instances, uh, people are choosing to ignore the sovereignty of this God. This is important. So let's just zero in right now on this particular point of violence. If we go to Ezekiel, chapter 8 verses 17 and 18 and again I, I really would covet your wonderful uh, media voice at this point in time and he said to me have you seen this O son of man is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here for they have filled the land with violence then they have returned to provoke me to anger indeed they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I also will act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. Very importantly, when we see the mention in Ezekiel 8, yes. um, verse, uh, verse, 17. verse 17, you see him, the mention of abomination. God mentioned an abomination. That word abomination contains in its original text the word idolatry. Yes. So we see that Judah, which is God's people, practicing idolatry. Yes. And um, we will talk later on the different forms of idolatry. And as a result, the Bible says, violence filled the land. It's important, eh? It was not said that it was other gods uh, or other religions. It said, God's people, Judah, mm -hmm. practice idolatry and violence fill the land. Yes. I am making a point here, Prophet Charmin, yes. that because there is idolatry within the kingdom of God, God. that violence is rampant on the land. Wow. And this is very important. Now, if we look at the spiritual dynamics of the spirit of violence, and we look at envy, jealousies, anger, rage, we look at the whole cohort of, 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 of the, the, the relationship between these demonic entities, it is clear that they can only exist when the church does not have the ability to remove them through the instructions given to us by God when he said whatever is bounded on earth, on earth bounded is heaven. bounded in heaven. So if it, this, this is such a very important part of what we have to talk about here. When the church has lost its ability to control the movement and dimensions of demonic activity, then we know that the church is practicing idolatry. My goodness. Because the power of God cannot be evident. The Bible says, when we look carefully at, at, at what uh, uh, Deuteronomy 5 um, says, with regards to the, that, that first order that God created with regards to our relationship with him. And he talked about the visiting of uh, iniquities to the third and fourth generation. What that actually means is that God is going to remove his spiritual cover, oh, right? He is going to remove the hedge, yes. the boundary he has placed around his people to prevent darkness from entering. Yes. All right? So therefore, if we see darkness upon the land manifested in the form of violence, yes. we know then that the church has lost its ability to erect boundaries because God has departed. Okay? God has departed. He has pushed him. In other words, we have pushed him away or he has turned his face because he is seeing uh, 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 things that make him jealous and angry. That's very important. And I want to cut you a moment. You spoke about uh, the church having idolatry. Mm -hmm. How does the church have idolatry? I know there are different religious denominations within Christendom. 
and and some of these uh, would have you know carved images and, and and molten images and so forth but as it pertains to evangelical churches we don't see the carved images how is the church of Jesus Christ operating in idolatry all right Prophet I mean that's a wonderful statement and a wonderful question um, time right now doesn't give us the ability to go into the whole uh, book of Ezekiel and particularly look at chapter 8 but I'm just gonna let you know that within Ezekiel chapter 8 there was a point in time where the Ezekiel through the Spirit of God was shown inside things that were happening inside deep within the temple of God that were not seen from outside and they said upon the walls there were all the abominable things and, and uh, idols we must understand when it's important also in Ezekiel 8 it's important in Ezekiel 8 that when the leaders sorry there were 70 elders there were 70 elders uh, who actually and and and, and it, it, it also mentioned later on of men of stature within the temple who also doing kind of idol worship so I want to say something prophet Shami is going to be very controversial so I want to be clear on it usually when we see idol worship in the church it is because there's an issue with leadership okay I'm going to be frank about it idol worship cannot enter your assembly if there is not a problem with the leadership within the assembly are you speaking here about uh, mantle worship we can talk about mantle worship but we could also talk about men and women of God who are leading assemblies but have not put God as their primary source of reference with regards to how they live their lives yes. that is very important they are not accountable yes. to God for their lives in other words they have redrawn the boundaries of their lives so therefore they have allowed uh, themselves to be caught up in acts that are not considered to be uh, within the boundaries of God all right and continue to practice such acts yes okay and as a result they stand before and operate in a gift not under an anointing yes, yes. that's very important so we, if we look at King Saul King Saul operated out of a gift at one point when he went and prophesied with the prophets but he was not anointed king anymore so he had no anointing so that's what is happening so when you see that therefore there can be no conviction yes. the people will continue to, 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 to live in their sin I always want to tell you in a, a Exodus 32 um, when the people of God were in the desert in the wilderness and Moses had gone up to Mount Sinai to be with the Lord that is when he was given the, the the Ten Commandments it was it was recorded within the Bible that the people ask um, um, Aaron to make them to make them an idol they ask Aaron and this is what I'm going to tell you when within the Church of Jesus Christ the ministers minister the word based on what the people want to hear not what God is saying that is where you have established idolatry my goodness well we're gonna say to God this is who oh, you better stay tuned because not only are we gonna see uh, uh, it, uh, idol worship being one of the very main factors that affect violence upon your land but certainly sexual immorality as being another factor stay tuned Saints we'll be right back get your copy of today's message email us info at maptt.org that's info at maptt.org or write to us the ministry for anointed prophecy we map p.o box 6057 diego martin trinidad west indies you can listen to many of minister charmaine's messages or watch her on youtube when you visit the website www.maptt.org messages such as carriers of his glory a four-part series spiritual gravity the power of faith and resurrection power be sure to watch the program highway of holiness on cnc3 every second and fourth sunday at 8 30 a.m on tv6 every first third and fifth sunday at 7 a.m check your local listings and tune in to this station 
as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. MAP's Miracle, Healing and Teaching Services are every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. The Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7 Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we will be speaking about idol worship and idolatry as being a significant factor that will cause uh, violence and sexual immorality upon our land. You know, there's a saying that says uh, the voice of the people is the voice of God. And I want to say to you, according to what you just said before, before we cut the, the first half, that is absolutely not true. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. Yes. That is a lie from the kingdom yes. of darkness. Yes, that is, that is not true. So, uh, uh, Minister Curtis, why don't you continue now and just let us know because we dealt a lot with violence, right? Let's go into now sexual immorality and how sexual immorality really, um, you know, uh, is, is something that is significant as it pertains to idolatry, you know, in a, in a land. Yes. So again, looking at the Bible and the evidence that exists in the Bible, we begin to look at sexual immorality. Now, I just wanted to say that um, when you see idolatry, there are two people who are always, uh, always walking down the street with idolatry, which would be sexual immorality and violence. So once you see idolatry, you know that those two are walking along. So one of the, the ways that we could really test our hypothesis would be to look at um, uh, uh, Acts uh, chapter 7, verses 41 to 42. And again, I get to hear that wonderful media voice of Prophet Charmin. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? This is very important. Now, when you saw that they were offered up to the host, right? Yes. Of heaven. Yes. That word host actually means stars. And when you look at the ancient text, it actually means the goddesses of sexual sin. Yes. And let me explain so people would say, but why would God offer. It's not that God offered. God removed his canopy of protection yeah. and as a result there was an invasion of that particular spirit. Yes. Now if we go to, um, to Romans 1 verses I think it's 22 um, uh, and let's, let's just have a quick read so we will see what these spirits, how these spirits. Of, uh, chapter 1 verse 22. Professing to be wise they became fools and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. You can stop right there. Let's tie this in. The people of God were delivered from Egypt by the hand of Moses through the power of God. They never saw who did that miracle, but they knew that that person worked through Moses. Moses established order based on instructions from God while they were in the wilderness. Moses decided or through instruction of God went on that 40 day fast he went up to Mount Sinai the people instructed the spiritual leader what they wanted he being the spiritual leader who is supposed to be instructing the people okay went and did what he did he made an image of a creature yes quite obviously wisdom that's why the, in Romans that we see that they, they threw off some wisdom how could a calf that you have running around your camp be the God who delivered you from the Egyptians with those mighty signs? So that's what they said, the truth, they believed a lie. And as a result, the Bible declares that the host 
of heaven invaded that camp because God departed. He moved away. In scripture, you could see it, but Prophet Shah, I mean, we look, we read the minor prophets. We see in the minor prophets, God says that I shall move away and my wrath shall be established. And as a result, there was sexual immorality, and this is what this is important. It spoke about homosexuality. If you read further on in from uh, verse 24, 25, 26, you're going to see homosexuality, homosexuality being practiced. Yes. You're going to see a form of intolerance uh, uh, among brethren yes. being yes. practiced. Yes. So what we know based on Bible references, yes. based on Bible investigation, based on our relationship with God, based on information that the Holy Ghost would download into our spirit, that clearly once there's idolatry on the land or within the church, yes. there is going to be violence and sexual immorality. Yes. And I'll define that, 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 um, that idolatry. When the people within the church, okay, have become so weak in their relationship with God and strong in their relationship in the things of this earth when they have, for instance, more focus on the carnal things that are temporal, for instance, money, cars, you know, you know, competition. Competition is a very prominent aspect of, 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 of Christian life now. We know that among ministers of the gospel. They are competition, and many of them, and I would say some of them, not many of them, some of them actually rejoice when they hear other ministries collapse or they break up. You and I have been privy to some conversations along that line. So we know that idolatry need not be building of an image made out of gold or stone or, or, um, or wood, but it can actually refer to and directly so when we look at the, the, the scripture to is a, a particular position in your relationship with God where he no longer has the preeminence in your life and as a result you have rewritten God's boundaries and you continue to minister as a result that which that spirit which is dominant in your life is being transferred to the people the people now they, they develop what is called mantle worship and instead of worshiping God they began to worship the thing that has been created so as a result, they are now yoked to that minister. So when he falls, they fall with him. And I could call many ministries that have gone through this, this, this sort of thing over, over the time. And what God is doing now is that he's shaking ministries up. Because he's trying to tell us, please understand, I am your God. I change it not. What I have said in the past, I shall do in the present, and it shall be done in the future. So therefore, we have to take uh, note that the violence and sexual, immor sexual immorality we are seeing on the land, those manifestations are a direct result of the inability of the Church of Jesus Christ to remain within the boundaries that he has set. You see, God looks at the intents of the heart of man. And so there is so much idolatry in the heart of man. And the scripture yes. even speaks about idolatry in the heart. Yes. Right. And so, and so, uh, Minister Curtis, why don't you, why don't you continue to share with us? So, what is, what is, what do we do there for? And uh, wait a minute, there are different forms of idolatry, right? Is there intellectual? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Idolatry. Very importantly, uh, Prophet Shaman, okay. you, you, you hit the nail on the head, and then I'll go into how we, how we, how we going to be dealing with that. What type of medication we'll apply? Yes. But you hit the nail on the head when you said intellectual idolatry. We have now in this time, and the Bible has prophesied that in the last days that we shall, we shall be seeing an increase in knowledge. Yes. We, so we have transferred yes. the wisdom of this earth yes. into a doctrine that is now being released within our assemblies instead of using the divine wisdom of God. Yes. Because God says the wisdom of his earth is foolishness. Eh? Yes. All right. So what has happened is that we have become intellectual. We have designed programs to get wealth. Yes. Not so? Yes. There's only one way profit charming, designed by God for yes. Christians to prosper. That is by sowing and reaping. Yes. That is clear. There is no other way. You are to be a tither and you are to give your offerings. If you are not doing these things, you rob God. That is another form of idolatry because you have written over the boundary. So now you have 
churches have big in investment portfolios. I'm not saying that you are not to be as wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, that you understand the market dynamics within the world and you, 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 you are wise in terms of how you manage your income. But I am talking here about people using, putting aside the wisdom of God and using the wisdom of man, which is temporal, if we cast off the wisdom of God, if we cast off the boundaries set by God, yes. we end up in a situation where there are manifestations of demonic activity, as we mentioned with violence and uh, sexual immorality. And uh, these, uh, we as people of God have to understand that God has commanded us to have him, to give him preeminence in our life. Yes. He must be first at all times. Now, I am not telling us, saying here to the people that view your program to have what we call foolish faith. You must have wisdom. And the wisdom is to operate within the dimension called the earth. Yes. That is not what I'm not telling you don't have wisdom. But obviously, if you have replaced God in your life yes. based on an intellectual ability to speak about philosophy and the principles of pleasure and not be guided by the word of God, then you are an idolater yes. and you will receive the penalty thereof. So what's the solution? Right. Very importantly, the solution is simple. Back to basics. God desires that we sup with him. God desires that he can call us sons. Therefore, we are now to get back into the word the light of the word, the presence of God. We have to reestablish holiness within the church. I say to you that the uh, Paul, Apostle Paul wrote, he said there's an evil within the church, not even mentioned by, uh, listen, that is not even tolerated by the pagans. Paul wrote that. And it is the same thing that is happening within the church of Jesus Christ. The divorce rate is the same as the world. We, we don't have much more time. Um, what I would like you to do is to just look into the camera yes. and really just pray for, for those because there are people, many people who are operating in idol worship and some of it is carved images, right? Yes. And, and so you want to pray for them uh, that they would renounce these images because it's against the law of God and that they, were, that they will receive Jesus Christ in their heart. They will renounce sexual immorality and violence in Jesus' name. Father, we know that you hear us always because we have been given the opportunity to come boldly before your throne. And Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, you said in the last days you should pour your spirit upon all flesh. And Father, right now, we ask that you pour your spirit out on all those who are listening right now, that there be a clear demarcation in their heart as to the directions that they should follow, Father. That they shall begin to experience you, Lord, in a new dimension, Lord. I ask, Lord, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that homes are invaded with that holy presence, so that men and women shall know and be begin to practice those things which are good and of good repute in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Well, saints of God, if you've prayed that prayer along with Minister Curtis, I would like you surely to call the number on your screen, write to us, send us an email, let us know that you've renounced those idols uh, uh, so that you can, you can now fulfill the purpose and call of God that is really upon your life. So I want to close today by saying to you that I love you with the love of Jesus and much, much more importantly, Jesus loves you. God bless. Get your copy of today's message. Email us, info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www maptt.org Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on CNC3 every second and fourth Sunday at 8.30 a.m. On TV6 every first, third, and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. 
Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. MAP's Miracle, Healing and Teaching Services are every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. The Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7